Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Goat King Riders Club. Unfortunately, Hull is still being a working class man, so uh, we're going to have to give some black magic another crack. How does that... I'm getting a bit confident. It fucked up last week, but... Sometimes you... practice makes perfect. Alright. You ready? Alright. Alright. You ready? Yeah, man, let's do it. I don't know. I don't know where this sound the comes from. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, how are you? Hey, I got I got a proper celebrity. I got the full <laughs> celebrity this time. There you go. I'm well, thanks. Are you yeah, shaking hands? I come uh, all the way from Sydney. Yes, yeah, just my, my to do the podcast. My black magic's game pretty good, man. I <laughs> teleported you across the country. <laughs> I, I got a flight in three hours. So let's uh, really, yeah. Back man, to that's Sydney. convenient that you you had a return flight from yeah, Earth absolutely when you were in Sydney. Yeah, yeah, crazy. The dark magic you pull on. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was pretty good. Absolutely, I'm impressed. I'm glad you didn't see the Adam Sandler episode last week because we didn't bring all of Adam Sandler <laughs> <laughs> from LA. Yeah, it was pretty... Uh, we just got the bones. We didn't get the rest of it. But, uh, yeah, you're on Goat King Riders Club, man. You were... Welcome. I, I'm welcome to myself. I, I was... Uh, it looks nice. It's Thanks, very nice. Man. It's very professional. You know what? I wasn't thinking it was going to be this professional. Like, I'm very impressed. We're in a haunted library. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> well, like, that's Can't even... Can you tell the behind us? There's all books and shit for the green screen. <laughs> can <do> <laughs> <laughs> You're I'm fucking j- ruined. No no no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It looks. Uh, uh, no one told me to. We're in a haunted library. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we're in a haunted okay, library. Yeah, okay, retake. So, have you brought a story this week? You know how the show works. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. I'm gonna I, show I watched you, it. Yeah, you watched it. Yeah. Which? Who was your favorite? What was your? I favorite watched one? the Bones one. The book. <laughs> Adam Sandler one. The Adam Sandler. Yeah, one. yeah. It looks right. good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll see. I, will start I reckon my story is pretty good, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Do you like, want to go first? It then? scared me. So yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. No, I like scary stuff. So you you draw a picture as well? Yeah, like my, my drawing's not very good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that another? Oh, what's that? Where's my? Okay. Uh, no, it's pretty. So it's. I'm guessing. Is it a treehouse? No, no, no. Am I supposed to like go? Uh, well, yeah, so I can't. Well, I kind of think that this is what I think. I think it's a treehouse on top of a like a pine tree, and uh, a guy with no facial features is stabbing a dude with two eyes out of pure jealousy. <laughs> That's a pretty good interpretation. You know, when I when I heard you just talking about that, I realised I probably should have added stuff below to make it a bit more obvious because I'm looking at it now and going, yeah, that looks like a tree house, but it's actually... Do I tell you what it uh, is? No, uh, you tell us the story and then we'll kind of... Okay, yeah. so that's what you think. So you think it's uh, like a tree house? Actually, I think, I think it's called... What do you think the title of the story is? Uh... Bedroom stabber. Is that not it? No. Oh, what is it? No, no. It's my name is Cameron. Oh, okay. So Cameron was a twelve-year-old boy living in country Victoria. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to keep that uh, open we'll, or it'll, it'll be here? Okay. Yeah. So Cameron was a twelve-year-old boy living in country Victoria. I'm sorry, I'm crossing my legs because that's what I'm yeah, presenting. You got your radio voice. On. <laughs> he lives in a farmhouse. The closest neighbours are one kilometre away. One night, his parents went out for dinner, and he stayed home alone. At first, he was excited about staying home alone. He was planning on playing video games until late and eating lots of chocolate. <laughs> However, is this like just a diary excerpt? <laughs> this is like when I was 12. This is just me going... When my parents are out, I'm eating nothing but chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> this is a real life story. However, what was at first excitement quickly turned into fear when he started hearing noises up in his attic. 
Right, so up there is the attic. Yeah, I know how stories work. <laughs> you just, uh, oh, yep, yep, yep. Yep, okay. yep. so <laughs> the noises got louder and louder. He decided to check it out. Cameron ran to his dad's shed to get the ladder. He came back, ran up the ladder and into the attic. There was no noise, but it was very dark. <laughs> he then heard a loud thump. Boom. He jumped, turned around and saw the attic door had shut. Right? So, <laughs> Keep going, <bro>. Cameron... <laughs> started to have a panic attack. He couldn't breathe. <laughs> he then heard a soft, faint voice. Hello, Cameron. Cameron was now freaking out big time. He turned around and it was his grandma who passed away five years ago. Cameron, you need to get out of this house. Your parents are going to kill you. They killed me, your own grandma. Camera st Cameron started crying. He turned around and saw the light on and his dad's head pop out onto the attic door or into the attic door his dad came running over to Cameron but as his dad was running over his knife fell out of his pocket as he was running Cameron picked it up looked at his dad in the eyes and stabbed him to death stare <laughs> is, that, is that where you ended it? <laughs> I like it it had like a bit of Home Alone uh, and the what was the other one? Like the burbs. It had like a real goosebump sort of vibe to it. Yeah, you know what? When I was, when I was thinking of like a, what, a story, I mean, it's, it's pretty, you know, I'm not a storyteller. I'm not a, I'm not a writer. So <laughs> it's, it's yeah, as, I, as good as it's going to get. Well, but, it's uh, disappointing that people that are going to read this aren't going to get your exposition <laughs> for your commentator. So. Well, the, the, I was thinking Home Alone vibes, but also like, yeah, maybe like that, you know, trying to make that a bit more uh, spooky. But, was, um, it, was there like a an inspiration for this or not really? I mean, I just you know what? Actually, I was uh, I was walking upstairs. I was in my own house the other day yeah. when I came home. And I looked up and the attic was open. And then obviously this was around the time I was thinking of what story I'd bring in to uh, to Sean's podcast. Yeah, and uh, I was like, oh, an attic story would be good because like the attic was like half open. I was like, fuck, that's kind of creepy. And uh, yeah, from there I was like, and then I don't know. I was just sitting there. I was like, oh, home alone being by yourself and obviously this is the house I grew up in yeah. so I was like oh yeah just make a little bit of everything add it together put it in a little uh, blender and here we are so wait in your attic there's no like pink panthers pink panthers yeah the insulation no I, I mean am I or attic? just like you're just your grandma's up there <laughs> I don't know she might no no both you, my grandmas are still alive so yeah, oh, okay. they're, uh, they're on the ground level but um, yeah. <laughs> 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 but I uh, no the the attic. I've never been up my attic actually. I'm pretty sure it's just s storage and other shit. Like you know, really? yeah, yeah. It's one yeah. of those things. You know, actually, a house. This was like before before we bought this place, like maybe seven eight years ago. Yeah. We were when we were like looking to move house. Oh, it's probably longer than that now. It's probably like ten or eleven years ago. We were looking at this house. I really liked this house. We we're going to move in, and pretty much it was my bedroom. But then it was a wardrobe, and then you open this door in the wardrobe, and it was the whole attic. But it was like, you know, it was a proper um, like, like a little secret, yeah, like Narnia. To, to, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to a full attic, though, right? So like, literally, the roof was a normal size roof. It was almost yeah. like a huge room. And I was like, shit. If that I that sounds like like one of the American houses you see. Like yeah. about poltergeist or something. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those type vibes, but except you wouldn't know how safe it would be to be in there. But I was thinking, shit, I'd always be in there like with mates and stuff, just because it's like, you know, it'd be, it'd be cool. Like, Eating chocolates and yeah, watching yeah. horror movies. <laughs> Saying hey to Nana. Every, everyone you know? be quiet, <laughs> otherwise we're going to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, Nana will wake up, you know. So, um, yeah, but like that was pretty cool. But um, Let's have a look at this picture again. So, so we're... So is that grandma's coffin? That's a box. Okay. So you sort of see the vibe now? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, although this kind of looks like the trunk of a pine tree. It does. It yeah. does, doesn't it? I mean, look, I was thinking it was a ladder. That shit. should be the album of your first comedy album. <laughs> what? Shit. No, hey, that, that picture. Imagine that. As This could have been my first, like, yeah, stand-up poster. <laughs> That could be that could be yours. That That's how good it can and be. And then you can put just all your credits in like the ladder slots. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that'd be funny. Yeah, no, I like that man. That was a good story. Oh, thank you. Yeah, but what uh, do you what do you think, mate? I thought it was really great. I liked how you decided to pause 
to just check if Sean was even paying attention. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. paying attention, bro. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that it was all going in okay. It's like story time with a wiggle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just wanted to make sure that, you know, it's like, on the wake same page. up, Jeff. Is that what you think? <laughs> <laughs> He's still awake, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just wanted to make sure, you know, if you had any questions or anything like so that. So what was it called again? Cameron <laughs> gets that. My name is Cameron. My name is Cameron, yeah. Oh, was that like a My Name Is Earl fair, sort of? I kind of uh, hadn't thought of a title. And then when you were guessing titles, I was trying to think of one really quickly. And then that was the first one that my came name to is mind. Cameron, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why when you were, I don't know what you guessed. What was the title you guessed before? Uh, Someone getting stabbed? Uh, two man get... Man stabs uh, two eyed man. Sta- uh, stab room, I think it was. Stab Stabby room. room, yeah. Yeah, and I was just trying yeah. to think of something quick. But my name is Cameron kind of... Uh, it <laughs> does have like a very ominous sort of like... Uh, like teen horror novel. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah, young yeah. adult sort of fiction. It's yeah. like, my name is Cam. Because wasn't there a... What was that suicide one? Suicide uh, Squad? No. No, it was um, a Netflix special. And it was like... 13 Reasons Why? Yeah. And Did you like that? That was. A I good, never watched yeah, it. I like really the good. idea of it. Like, I, I read the, like, the synopsis was of it. it there's a second season now. Like, or there's a... Yeah. Because yeah. then, like, the, I think the sequel is like, the dude kills himself. Oh, fuck, I haven't watched it, so yeah. thanks. But I, uh, oh, well, I mean, you, you hear about that at the start, right? It's like the second... Yeah. That they go backwards almost. I don't know. I, I, I should watch it, but you I haven't should, watched you it. Watch the, fir- the first one's really good. But the first one, like, yeah, it's one of those things where you kind of know the, the ending before the start and it kind of just unfolds about how it got there. But a lot of people, um, yeah, were giving out about that. Like, that got a lot of controversy, that show. Well, I think it was... Uh, they didn't like the way that it portrayed suicide. They almost... I think the controversy was like it, they all almost made it poetic. That it was like, no, that's not what suicide is. Suicide's like a real harsh fucking yeah, reality. Yeah, you like know, they made it a bit like like dr- teen drama. Especially being far. a teen drama and like youth suicide and stuff. I think that's kind of yeah. what that story was all about. Yeah, because yeah. there was like a bunch of things in there where they were like, you know, they already not include her in the group or not do this and it's like all of them things where well, there's a, it's a lot more complex than that yeah for people so people have probably had that experience yeah you know probably um and that's yeah. what your story was about <laughs> 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 you know i'm so, sure now we're going to get people going hey like you so know i met maybe, my maybe nana in the, gr- in the attic and it wasn't like that well maybe the dad was not even his dad it was almost like an imaginary friend so when the dad drops the knife it's almost like he just saw the knife and kills himself. See, that would have been better. Like Fight Club or something. But the, yeah, yeah. That yeah. would have been better. Yeah, if your story was more like Fight Club, it would have been way better. Oh, if it was like Fight Club, it would be I fucking like, amazing. Because <laughs> if I came in with like a Fight Club type story. Yeah. What's his name? Jack, uh, Chuck Polinac? I don't fucking know. I think Chuck Polinac was the author. Right. Yeah. Have you had him on? Uh, he's... Uh, it's next week. Uh, Aaron's talking to him. Nice, awesome. <laughs> yeah, so I'm keen to see how much. Yeah, I'm sure yours is way better. <laughs> well, probably. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know, you've got experience. You're you're good at what you do. Lucifer's Anus Dankus Symph- Dances Symphony. Yeah. Da- oh, dances. Okay, yeah. yeah. Where Sean Conway. Okay, so I'm looking at this now and. Uh, First thing that's popping to mind is religion is coming to my mind. Mm -hmm. Is this a tomb? Is this a coffin? Is this someone lying down or is this someone standing? I'll give you a clue. It's more like a sacrificial table, like a a sacrifice and altar. Right. So this is the devil, I'm assuming. And this is is a priest? Mm, No. Am I getting the wrong end? No, of well, you, well, tell us what you is think. Is that me? What would be the story that you see here? Like, if if you saw this and you were like, what's this, what, what story am I going to write so about So if this, this is like this, I see this is someone in a coffin, yep. right? And the people around here are like spirits. Yep. So this is the, the devil guy. This is the priest. Also, the, the title might give you some Lucifer's clue. anus dances... Symphony, anus. Yeah, so yes. it's like another word for butthole. Yeah, I know what the word <laughs> means. Thanks, Sean. But I uh, <laughs> urban dictionary right next to me when I need it. I uh, but <laughs> but uh, and dances symphony. So oh, 
I don't know. Where's the where's the where's the bums? Uh, well, what do you think the story is called? Lucifer's anus dance. It, that's thing. what it's called. That's what it's called. Uh, you want me to read it for you? Yeah. Okay. Lucifer's Anus Dances Symphony by Sean Conway. The young music journalist Karen was about to embark on her first professional interview with bona fide celebrities, the Lucifer's Anus Dances Symphony, or LADS for short. Karen had got her press pass and headed back, backstage to her first ever death metal concert. She had her legal notepad ready and her brand new Casio cassette recorder. There had been an urban legend that the lads had a history of sacrificing first-time female music journalists to Satan, but she was confident that it was just a rumour and all those first-time female music journalists who disappeared at their gigs was just one big old silly coincidence. She sat down with the band when the lead singer, Jeffrey McKilljournos, said, She's perfect. Karen began to blush and asked, Why do you think I'm perfect? This is when the drummer stabbed journos to death, Steve, quickly stepped in and explained that the band was notorious for sacrificing first-time female music journalist to Satan to maintain their success. I actually wanted to talk to you about that with you guys, uh, but first off, maybe you could tell me why you said I was perfect, Karen said in her most professional interview tone. Are you serious? We just told you why. We just said why we think that you're perfect. We're going to murder you for Satan, Jeffrey McKill, journo said. So is murder and Satan like a metaphor or something? Karen asked. No, they all said in unison. Someone just grabbed her. All the band members picked up Karen and tied her to the sacrifice in catering table. You don't have to do this, she screamed. A large jagged knife was thrust down onto her chest, but it broke before it hit her body. Jeffrey McKilljonos ripped open her blouse and saw a shiny crucifix. That's right, losers, I'm one of Jesus' warriors and I'm here to vanquish you, Karen said. She quickly ran to her Casio cassette deck and pressed play. The band covered their ears as the evil spirits fought to stay in their bodies, but Leonard Cohen's hallelujah was too much for them as the evil spirits were sucked up into the magical Casio cassette deck. The band was free from those evil spirits. How do you feel? Karen asked. I feel so alive for the very first time, one of the band members said. Karen smiled triumphantly. Go out there and rock the house down. The band grabbed their gear and announced to the crowd that they no longer wanted to be called Lucifer's Anus Dancers Symphony. They simply wanted to be called P.O.D. I like that, man. Yeah. You had me by every word. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, so just now I'm looking at from the story, are these pencils underneath, is that the spirits? They're the band members. Okay, right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the pencils under, like, is that the, the spirits leaving their body? Oh, uh, no, that's kind of my style, is I draw it out in pencil first. Right, okay. And then yeah. I go over with... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like my street version, you know, it's how I, you know... Right, so what 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 uh what inspired you to well, use I a think, journalist? What do, you, what do you think inspired it? It, it? it was actually well, you know, this week. Are you still working for Triple J or no, 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 no? Oh no. ah, well, well, you've still got like your finger in like the music yeah, scene yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, like all the little Nas controversy that's been happening with him giving like lap uh, lap dance to Satan and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's okay, kind of yeah, what inspired. Yeah. What? Which? Do you think that's evil? No. <laughs> Are you familiar with P.O.D.? No. You, uh, I, I fucking knew he wouldn't know Why P.O.D. You, what, what was, P.O.D. P.O.D. is, um, they're like a new metal band from like the early 2000s uh, and they're like, uh, like real oh, Christian related. Okay, right. And okay. if you know P.O.D., like one of the, I knew you wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't get it, but one of the, uh, one of their hit songs was Alive. Uh, and so, like, when they ask, how do you feel? And he says, I feel so alive for the very first time. And I didn't realise, like, because I used to like him a lot when yeah. I was in high school and stuff, but I didn't realise they were a Christian rock band. And then I was like, man, you should play some P.O.D. And they're like, well, you're really into that Christian sort of stuff? And I'm like, they're not Christian. They're like a new metal band. And then they played the song Alive, and, like, the lyrics are like, uh, I feel so alive for the very first time. I can't deny you. I feel so... And, like, all their lyrics are about, like, Jesus and stuff. But, like... Perfect uh, time to be playing 
during this period on <laughs> on Good Friday. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Oh, I didn't think of that. Man. Well, this will come out next week. But yeah, 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 you're yeah. right. I was think, as I was saying that, that's why I was like, oh, fuck, but it's not coming out today, is it? So, <laughs> but, uh, No, you're right. Hey, the magic of production, yeah. right? But um, no, that, that's that's cool. I, I'm you should check out POD because uh, they did get a... Because a lot of the uh, bands of that era, like Korn and Slipknot and stuff like that, weren't, uh, weren't fans of what they believed, but they like respected them right. as people, which was like a cool, right, cool okay, thing. You yeah, know? It was yeah. kind of like people with different opinions, they can all still... Did you go to t- any of their shows? Nah. No? They, nah. Did, did they I, tour much? I don't... They might have done like Big Day Out back in right. the day, but like <laughs> I think one of the only ones... At uh, that time, like the biggest one I saw was like Rage Against the Machine. A few oh, years. sick! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where did you awesome. see them? Man, I saw them at Claremont Showgrounds for Big yeah. Day Out, and they, one of the security guards turned off the music because the crowd was being too rowdy. And Which then at a f- music festival, at a music festival, and then uh, the crowd was uh, the band was like, "What the fuck are you doing, cunt?" Like. You're a fucking security guard. Like, yeah, yeah. Fuck. What the fuck? What, what was he thinking? What, because he was like noise? Well, no, because they're all rowdy and shit. Like, yeah. yeah. Jesus. Because, you know, um, in in uh, in Sydney, right, like, because around certain areas when they have, like, music festivals, I was hosting a music fest. This was, like, in north or whatever it was of Sydney. So it was, like, half an hour from the city. Well, like, Manly Way? No, it was, like, Macquarie Way. Oh, yeah. And they, they, it was like, a, there was like Jungle Giants. There was a bunch of people on. It was like, you know, good sized music fest. There was probably like five, 6,000 people there. Yeah. But pretty much at 11 o'clock, regardless of who was playing, what was happening, music had to be off like to a T. So like, they were like, um, because Sydney's weird with those sort yeah, of, yeah, yeah. With like even the airports and things like that. Yeah. Like there's the blockout zones. So they're like, to a T, no matter who's playing, like, you know, Jungle Giants, big band, like, yeah. you know, a lot of people there, they're like, to a T, the music has to be fucking switched off yeah. and i was MC, and so like i was i went up and i didn't realize that like, they're already behind in time i didn't realize that uh sometimes like not like comedians where you welcome to the the stage yeah. and they go up on stage straight away yeah. and with them i hadn't introduced the band yet that was headlining right so i literally which was jungle dance huh yeah, which yeah. was Jungle Giants. And uh, <laughs> so I hadn't introduced them yet, but I didn't realise that they're... Sometimes bands have like intro music and like hype music where their sets essentially yeah. started, but they just haven't gone on yet. Yeah. But they, do you know the thing was like... And it's like they're they're on the sides and they're going to come on and do a big fucking intro. So you thought it was your intro. So I thought it was my <laughs> intro. So no, to go on... I just think no one's been brought on yet. Uh. So like they've got this m- music right this. So it's like... Do, 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 do. So I'm like walking on. I'm halfway on the stage, right? There, one of the managers is on the fucking side of the stage yelling at me, like, get the fuck off. Dude, this is their intro music. Because I'm about to, hey, everyone. Like, <laughs> like wow, dude, yes. their music's underneath. Like, six, and I'm pretty sure the crowd even knew that the, the, the that set had started. And like, yeah, because 100% I walk on and I go like this and walk back <laughs> off again. So I was like, oh, fuck. So, like, by the end of it, uh, they'd got on and it was such an awkward vibe. Because I was like, <laughs> well, I thought I was supposed to go on and introduce them. Like, that's my job. And they were like, yeah, we just, like, started because, like, it was so far behind. <laughs> but I walked on. But that, man, like that's how to be honest like, did they what, ever go at you afterwards like what what the fuck were you doing no 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 because no nah, they didn't do easy, that easy easy mistake yeah no not even that it was just like they didn't really go they didn't really say much wasn't that way. much of a fuck up yeah. yeah but the other one like wait did you do Roto Fest with uh, Sticky Fingers <laughs> nah do you remember that Roto Fest when he jumped off the thing yeah I heard about this what happened oh I was there I was there yeah um, and then he got he jumped off the scaffold and because uh I think he had another problem with like security and stuff. Yeah. Because it had like the big scaffold and like that. And he yeah. was just sitting on the scaffold at the top. And then he jumped into the crowd. The Roto police took him on like the first ferry. He jumped off the ferry, swam to one of the nearest boats, and just started drinking what? people's boats. But uh, uh, people's uh, drinks on the boat. But I think they were still, they had an even bigger gig the night before. So they kind of went like, 72 hours of just pure partying. By the time they did Roto Fest... They couldn't they, find him though, right? Didn't he just go missing? Were they trying yeah, to find him? Yeah, he was on him? that bike. He was on... He jumped off the ferry. Because I think he might have got in like legal trouble back at like Fremantle Port. Uh, 
but he wasn't on the boat. He was on like. Did some, police have to find him? Yeah, I think I think it made the papers and stuff, but it was pretty. Jesus, it was Christ. pretty ball. Th- well, the ball, the most ballsiest thing was jumping off that fucking scaffold because it was like. Yeah, a yeah. second story building, pretty much. Jeez, is it the ferry? Like, even if you're from the bottom of it, like you. No, this was like just on the stage. The ferry, you just yeah, jump yeah, into yeah. water. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. But then again, he'd been up for like seventy two hours, so it still wasn't that. It was so a nice little yeah. shower for him, a uh, refresher. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man! No, it's yeah. it's uh it's hectic being a life musician. I couldn't I couldn't imagine a comedian doing that, well, like jumping off scaffolding and like. Oh, uh, Sam Kinison used to have some wild stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But any, uh, any Aussies? I mean, some wild <laughs> shit went down, though. Like, Rotto, do any comedians do any wild shit like that? Oh, it's just. I can't do that, man. I'll incriminate too many people, huh? bro. I'm going to incriminate. Let's talk about yourself then. What criminal activity did you do at Rotnest? Oh, I, I rode my bike without a helmet. <laughs> uh, have you got another story in yeah, I've mind? got my mid 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 oh, a nine nine word story yeah my midwife story midwife at a cemetery which I uh, so uh, this is our nine nine random yeah, word story it. challenge have you got the other pages uh, let me just fucking intro because yeah, yeah, there's oh, going to be an animation here yeah yeah right yeah. right here Sean Hose, 99 Red Word, Cocktail! Alright, so uh, you went first last time, so I'm going to go first with this week's topic. You had midwife at a cemetery, yep. and I'm doing gardener at a party. Okay. Okay. Gardener at a party by Sean Conway. Mike the gardener was working hard in Bernie Sanders' garden when he came across a brick of cocaine. Mike looked around to see if anyone saw him and quickly packed the cocaine into his overalls and continued gardening. He was planting some bastard toe flax flowers when he stumbled across Bernie's murdered body. It was Friday afternoon. Mike didn't need this sort of drama to end his week. Then it clicked. He'd always wanted to mingle with the political elites. With Mr Sanders' body and a brick of cocaine, all he had to do was organise a weekend at Bernie's. So you like that story? Yeah, yeah, that was great. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, that was my story for Gardner. Yeah. Uh, so party. if I knew the movie as well, it would have been. If you knew the movie, it would have phenomenal. been phenomenal. Oh, you would have been. In his you wouldn't have been able to handle how. Funny yeah, I don't think I would have been able to continue with my story. I would have just. Uh, yeah. I would have said would have yeah. had to. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're, we we're would good have had to go. Had like a half an hour break just for you to get your composure back. <laughs> <laughs> but you're uh, you're doing midwife. Midwife at a cemetery. At a cemetery. Look, I'll be t- I'll be honest. That this was a this was a tough one. Yeah. Um. You know. The, the, all the nine non word stories are tough, and that's kind of like the point where it's uh, it kind of, uh, it's. It's not easy, and that kind of like gives people different ways to express themselves. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it's like Garner at a party. I'm not sure there'll be many people sending in Bernie Sanders <laughs> stories. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like how like individuals interpret it, and then yeah, create their own art out of it. Well, I'm I'm pumped to see how this one flies. I mean, it was the best. I am. Huh? I'm I'm kind of see yours, man. Uh, midwife at a cemetery. Midwife at a cemetery. Yeah. Tessa, Tessa. by Kieran Lyons. <clears throat> so it's called Tessa. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I, I screwed it up before, but that, like now, yeah, I've got it. Tessa visited her mum Greta at the cemetery. She was there, and she noticed the lady on the ground screaming. She went over to the lady who started yelling, I'm about to have a baby. I'm about to have a baby. Tessa said, oh no, if only my mum was alive today. (laughs) She was a midwife. (laughs) Tessa went away to call an ambulance. She came back and saw the lady was holding her baby. Tessa was relieved. Thank God. I was about to call an ambulance. Looks like you managed it yourself. (laughs) Yeah, some old lady named... (laughs) (laughs) Go on. <laughs> God, it's not even a Bernie <laughs> weekend at Bernie's reference. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah, some old lady named Greta. Help me. Where did she go? That's yeah. <laughs> That's man. That is more 
goosebumps than your first story. <laughs> In a good way. Like, it was kind of like... Uh, there's, like, a lot of ghost stories like that. It was yeah. good. I don't okay. know. I mean... I'm not going to lie. The punchline is not as good as you think. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was laughing at the fact that I thought it was... A bit, I, I was t- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wasn't thinking it was amazing. I was thinking it was... Uh, but it was actually like uh, really good. Once again, I'm going to uh, do a reference that you're too, too young to remember. There used to be a show when I was growing up called Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah, and right. It was like, I've uh, never experienced... It was like a Nickelodeon show. Okay. And it was like these uh, kids late at night would go into like the woods with in front of a campfire right. and tell each other uh, scary stories. And that's very similar to like what they would say. Like the Right. Uh, you know, with uh like the ghost would come back and help him and then it was like, Oh, she was dead all along. Yeah. But no man, it was it's pretty good. I don't know how, why you lost it at the end. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know. I was just as I was saying it, whether because you, I, I, I wasn't sure whether you already knew where the story was going anyway. No. Anywhere or not. But it was just at the end as I was saying it, I was just like, oh no, this. What are you hitting? Oh, that's that's what's making the. It was the beer thing that you gave yeah. me of the other podcast. Are you gonna get merch as well? Yeah, we got merch oh, at uh, www.goatkingwc.com. Go check nice. it out. You're gonna. I'll, I'll make that clip and then you can put it on your social media. Yeah, so yeah. Don't. A lot laugh. of people can see. A <laughs> lot. <laughs> I'll, I'll share it around. But um, I uh, no, I definitely um, I don't know. As I was saying the story, uh, in my head, I was like, oh, this sounds a lot shitter saying it out loud because I think I wrote it. You know, generally sometimes you write something down. It's like with jokes, with comedy. Yeah. Sometimes you write it down. You're like, oh, this is amazing. And then. I don't know if you've had these things where sometimes you don't end up saying it out loud for practice even. Like you might, yeah. you, you're on the way to the gig, you might drive, you might say it out loud. There's been times where I've never like said it out loud. And the first time I say it out loud is on stage. So as I'm saying it on stage, I'm like halfway through, I'm like, oh, this is actually so shit. Yeah. And you kind of just bail out of it. You're like, yeah. you kind of just go, hey, and like whatever. And then you move on, but you don't even give it like a, and other, I'm saying is that's what happened there. Yeah. I was like. <laughs> the other thing is uh, with comedy, you think, the punchline's going to be like a lot harder and then it kind of like, it's just like a fight in the wind. It kind of just... Oh, yeah. But the other like, way around, what? do you ever have them jokes where you, you say it and it's like, you just like, oh, this probably fucking might not work and it just goes... Yeah. And th- that's the best ones because you're the like, wor- The worst ones is where you come up with the joke on the way to the gig and one of my best jokes is one where I'm like talking to myself in the car going through my yeah, set yeah, yeah, yeah. and kind of like just trying to add tags. Yeah. And then I thought of this one joke in the car and then I did it at the old uh, Shapiro's gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it fucking tore up <laughs> and I still do it to this day. <laughs> well, you know my favourite joke of yours, Sean, that you've had no, for no, years. No, no, no. We can't bring it up on the podcast, yeah. but uh, that's my favourite. Even to this day, it yeah. all, like time to time, it just pops in my head. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's Well, it. that's what happens because, well, we've known each other for what, like eight years? Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. we did heroin for the first time together. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we geek together, heroin together. Oh, man, I was 15, you know. How you going, Miss, <laughs> Mrs. Oh, <yeah>. Lawrence? <laughs> but uh, we'll move on. Uh, so with those 99 Word Stories, we have a few viewers. Yeah. They send in their artwork and their 99 Word yeah, Stories great. based yeah. on the topic. So we'll go check out. Uh, Easy. Uh, did you make one this week, Aaron? I sure did. We'll, st- we'll kick off with Aaron's. So you can look him in the face when you say, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> So that looks like uh, a house. This, which one would this be? This is done Gardner? Gardner at a party. Did you draw this? No, this it's is It's a photo, done. you fucking oh, That's what I was thinking. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> I screen captured No, so with, with this, it's like uh, whatever people's creative outlet is. Right. We kind of like try to give it a platform. All right, let's watch. Costa, great to see you. Let me take those. Jackie McOopsie takes his coat and sack of vegetables. Do take care, they're very fragile. Oh, the vegans from next door are going to love you. Jackie and Costa make their way into the party. Hey everyone, Costa's here. A dinner is served and a bunch of people are enjoying a meal. How's your meal, Costa? Costa is sweating. He is very upset. Oh, Costa, these vegetables are amazing. Help. 
Costa's hands tremble as he takes his fork. I love you, Papa. I need to leave. I like that. I like that, that a lot. That, that was... was uh, that's how you should do your first, uh, like, Netflix special. It's, <laughs> it's just all you kind of, like, stop motion. <laughs> I love that. So you did that, what, with just a program yourself? Yeah, that's just Photoshop and a screen capture. Yeah. That's so sick. Yeah, record my voice. Man, you should see uh, his last week's one. With, with Dope? Uh, uh, what was it? It was... Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, actor in a, uh, actor in a classroom. classroom. And fuck, sick, man, it's yeah. It's so good. Like, uh, Aaron's been sending them in for ages and, like, they're fucking bonkers, which is what we love, man. That's and sick, right. You're a staple part of it, yeah. But did you, you know, do two or? No, yeah, no you mixed it up. One was the dete- the undercover detective from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah, that one was and from then I think Manzoukas, but the main dude. Costa from, from ABC. Giardis. From the ABC, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. He, I saw him at the Logies and it's like, I don't know who any He's quite, quite famous, know. right? Yeah, he's, he's yeah. pretty big. A gay's gardener. Stuff. Yeah, he's a big gardener. Yeah. I found that out this week. Um, and he just looks so much like Jason Manzuka, so I just chucked him yeah. in. <laughs> well, I kind of thought it was, uh, you know the dude, he was in, uh, uh, is it Afterlife? The one with um, Ricky Gervais? It yeah. Was, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, but it's not a movie, it's a series. Yeah, it's a series. Uh, and he used to always appear on 8 out of 10 Cats, and he like, big beard. Oh, used yeah, to, I know. He used to always wear like the Josh, brown suits. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ramesh. 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 No, Ramesh. Ramesh, yeah. No, he's funny as hell. He's, he's right. the one that, like, uh, Jimmy Carr fired him and he, like, kind of... Int- fired him? Yeah, so he's not a guest on the show. He kind of just goes, uh, oh, how you going, everyone? Jimmy, you, oh, you prick. Yeah, no, he's great. Yeah. That's not Ramesh. That's, um... Oh, fuck, I can't remember. But, yeah, he does bits on the show. Yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah. Jimmy fired him as a... Uh, no, I think he just thinks that... J- well, his kind of character thinks that Jimmy fired him so whenever he like kind of sneaks onto the show he comes onto the show like different characters and shit and then you'd be like oh how you going everyone jimmy you prick uh, <laughs> then, like, yeah. uh, uh, did you do one or two i just did the one today Fuck yeah. uh so who else we got we got um i think what we got next yeah we got oh uh, this is uh this is that from a classified thing on the newspaper no nah, this is uh look us, us, us. he uh he's another local comedian Oh, great. He's, uh, yeah, he's a green act. He sent us in a video last week asking our viewers if they wanted a big guest on his show. And oh, I was really? like, you fucking I love that. cheeky piece of shit. I love that. <laughs> Just uh, fucking hijack it. I love it. Treating yeah. our podcast like it's the like a West Australian class. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. But no, he's Hustle 101, hey? <laughs> yeah. No, he's good. He's, uh, his story's always got like a dark edge to him, so... Uh, Which one? What's he done? I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Hey, fellas. I was talking to uh, uh, Brian the other day, um, or whoever runs your social media. Might be your new producer. I don't know. Anyway, apparently with my little announcement in my last story video, uh, yeah, busted my chops a little bit. So I thought, hey, I'll tune into the latest episode, which came out right uh, just before I started recording. You're talking to me. If you're talking to anyone on social media, it's uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did you offend the producer, you offended uh, me. I, I didn't even know what title. The, like a bit one of, of the co-hosts of this show. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You've got to yeah. have a bit of a heel. Yeah, you know. In a show. And I turn on, and who is it on again? Cameron, claiming to be his first time as a guest. You stupid fucks uploaded the same video again. You uploaded the same episode of Spotify twice. <laughs> he messaged us looking for a co. I think he's trying to create this podcast rivalry. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I we will great. crush him. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I want to say that because we released the Spotify episode yeah. yesterday, uh, he was the only one that caught it out, or people just kept it to themselves. We're gonna say like, oh, it's a, uh, it's a April Fool's gag, and it wasn't. It was just a <laughs> you just uploaded two episodes yeah. of the same thing. Yeah. That's so. fucking great. I think the next time we do a live show or whatever, like you should just have us come in as a as a villain. Like yeah, just like an evil voice be, in the back. Yeah, I think it'd be really funny. 
Oh, so you got to work on your volume mixing. The theme is loud as hell, and then the rest of the show is a lot quieter. It's you, you got to balance your audio levels. I did I did flipping bash scripting to get that website going. Bash scripting. Can't even get your audio levels right. Learn some mixing and mastering. <laughs> I'm calling my shots early. Um, anyway, here's my story. Midwife at a cemetery. Uh... It was October 31st, the busiest night for spooky midwife, the necromantic midwife. Krognar, the necromancer, stood waiting in the cemetery. Let's raise this zombie horn! exclaimed Krognar. Widmife rolled her eyes. She had seen it all so many times. An overexcited necromancer hoping to raise an army of the damned with her help only to have their emaciated head cleaved off their body by a big strapping barbarian. It was a tale as old as time, or at least as old as Robert E. Howard's career. She began, Now push! Push! Not even half a zombie was out. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> <laughs> Good story. I liked it. I did. Uh, necro, yeah. necro. Uh, what do you say? Necromancers. Ne- are they yeah. Hellraiser? No, or is that like a common are term? Pretty much just a pretty common term for people that magically raise the dead. Ah, uh, okay. So that's kind of, but that's Hellraiser, right? That's what they were in Hellraiser. I would say Hellraiser was close, but I think Hellraiser is also like an ironic based thing, isn't it? To whoever. Uh, Hell, Hellraiser were the 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 puzzle box. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember Hellraiser? No. The, the pale dude with like all the pins in his head. It was like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't. Know I've never seen the movie. See the puzzle. He's a pretty. <laughs> He's a prominent figure. Of, yeah. 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 Oh, no, it was good. It was very D and D. It had a few references and such that I. I D and D. Yeah. Dun- Dragons and Krago. and now and uh, necromancy and shit like that. Mm. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. yeah. Not even close to your ball game. D&D is actually just yeah. drinks and drugs. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is in the Lions household. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good. Uh, you know, for all your shit talking, you always produce a decent story or source. Yeah, yeah, good story. Character voices. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe you'll be on a lineup with him next time you're back in Perth. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. he, yeah, he does stand up as well. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, who else? We got uh, Michelle. Michelle, at least, she sends in stuff every week. Right. But, uh, yeah, she's a lot less uh, uh, mean-spirited. Right, okay. But she's... Uh, so she, she a comedian? No, she's like a, uh, like a proper artist. And, like, each week when we announce the, the topics, she stops what she's doing and... Uh, wow. You know, pumps out a, an artwork like this. And that is... Uh, uh, that's a super creepy lady. Yeah, she's got like a Harry Potter scar on her. You know, I'll tell you what, Michelle, if you wanted to be like real mean, you could have had all our names <laughs> on the two. Uh, <laughs> but like, there's a, there's a, uh, oh, what are the, they weren't Barbies, they were like uh, a version of Barbie, but they were like small bodies and like giant heads. Is that mm. Bratz dolls? Bratz dolls. That's it? And oh, then, yeah, and then Br- Bratz had like a an offshoot version that was like chicks that were into like, uh, I think they were like murder dolls. Right. And they were kind of like different versions of uh, like horror icons. And, but like, and that's kind of what this reminds me of. She's a very good drawer. I do like this drawing. This would have taken a while to do. Yeah. And just, just the shade and the light. Mm. Yeah. But she always uh, busts to her. I, I tell you what, if she's not a zombie, she looks like she's had a bad time. Yeah, she's had <laughs> I, is she? Night. She's a copper. She's got yeah, like the billy club. Thinking, like she's got some sort of weapon or something there. I'm not really sure. And she's got the blue uniform. I tell you what, if she made the mouth any bigger, it would look like almost like a duck, like a how the duck <laughs> sort of. And she's got like the Harry Potter. She's got the double Harry Potter. Yeah, she's got, uh, like, the, the, the ha- and the little injury. Well, the hashtag yeah. bruising <laughs> is uh, what my co- uh, co-host Nathan Hull always does uh, in his uh, Okay, work. right, okay. So he, a lot of his shade and 
is very hashtag looking. Right, okay. So I think that might be a little subtle nod to like get rid of Kieran Lyons be, uh, and bring back <laughs> This could be like your new little like, you know how Justin Bieber's got like Beliebers. You could be like, your listeners could be, could be called like the hashtaggers. Hashtaggers. Or do you call them the goaties? Goaties. Is that your thing? You call them like the goaties? For now, yeah. King Goaties. Or the hashtag goaties? Hashtag goaties? The hashtag goaties. Yeah. Much more cartoony. Yeah. She she always mixes it up with uh, with styles. Okay. I think a lot of her. Uh, I th- wow. I'm pretty sure this must take her forever. Yeah, this one looks like it's got a lot. Of well, is but I also think she's that talented that she can like just Whip smash it out. them out. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've seen like if you check her Instagram details, will be there, and it'll be under like Luke Hall's, uh as well. Uh, but. Her, like, the stuff that she just does day to day and not, like, involved in our podcast is, like... Amazing. Amazing, man. Yeah. So, yeah, we're very lucky to have her send in some stuff. And uh, she, the chick on the right kind of, like, looks like you every time I've seen you at a party. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last time we were at a party together? Was it Melbourne? The only thing that she doesn't have is a chopper chop out of her mouth. A chopper chop. <laughs> 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 what was the last time I was at a party with you? Is it Sydney? Uh, what was the last party I saw you at? Uh, I never went out out with you in Sydney. No, no, we only ever just did our own thing in Sydney. It was never like clubbing. house parties or clubbing or anything. We never went clubbing, hey? No. Nah. We should do it sometime this week. Yeah? Hit a club. Hit a club? Yeah. Do you still hit the clubs often? Oh, yeah. Over here? Yeah. Which ones? Uh, the Clink. The Clink. <laughs> I don't know if that's Is that the that? one in Ro- Rockingham? No, no, right? no, that's Liquids. I, I went to Liquids once, uh, and that was the worst experience of my life because they had a. First of all, I went in there with like my best black shirt, and thinking like, "Oh man, I look fucking slick as." Right. And then you go in, then they had that like the Cusar lights, the neon. Oh. Uh, so like you just saw every little speck of dust on the black, and I'm like wondering why are all these fat dudes wearing white t-shirts? <laughs> and it's like, oh, that's why. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then they had a. Uh, a promo for Southern Comfort and Lime, like shots, and I'm, I literally would have had like 20 of them. It's just smashing them back, smashing them back. Why were you there? Because uh, we got uh, camps down there. Huh? So we camped down there. Oh. Like down at... Uh, was this when you, and stuff. you were younger or...? No, I still go down there. Oh, yeah, well, this was... No, it, was, it wasn't last week. <laughs> but, like, it was... Uh, yeah, this is what, like 10 years ago, maybe. Yeah. And, uh, yeah... All day hangover, and I haven't touched Southern Comfort since. Oh. I can't even smell it. It's like, was that the last time you probably went properly clubbing? Then, no, yeah, no, I've been clubbing. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm a, people want me at their club, <laughs> 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 right. but I'm kind of more like the guy on the left. Well, so I'm the guy on the right. Is that what you're saying? I think that's a chick, but yeah, <laughs> she kind of looks like. If you, man, you'd be too young for this reference, but. Uh, do you remember the dress that J Lo wore to the Oscars, and then a year later, yeah. the guys from South Park wore the same dress? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, does she talk in this, or does she just have different? Who Michelle? Yeah, no, nah, Michelle just sent her artwork in. Okay, so. yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, wonderful work, Michelle. I, I yeah. really, yeah. Nice stuff. They remind yeah. me of um, like a Cartoon Network show or something. I just can't think of it. Uh, it kind of feels like... Uh, well, these two look like... There used to be an old like British TV show. show like mm. an old British TV show. And it was like... Uh, it was the mix of like the government housing block people and like the upper class. Right. I can't think... They do look English, even as a cartoon. Yeah. Don't you reckon? She looked look like she, she would eat fig biscuits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny, actually. I um, Michelle's got this lady in pink here. Yeah. And yours, yeah. She reminds me of um, Mrs. Bucket from Keeping Up, uh, Keeping Up Appearances. Yeah, I think show. that's it. Oh, yeah, okay. I wrote her in my video. Yeah. Oh, in this one. Yeah. I, I was going to point that out. She yeah. was the one sitting next Mrs. to the PK. gunner. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so funny that she has something similar. It's crazy. It's, weird. it's crazy. But no, uh, I do like this. And make sure to check out Michelle's uh, stuff on her social media because it's just jam-packed full of, like, awesome art. But uh, I think that's about it. So we always end each episode 
with uh, Phil Cook, aka Cookie. You might nice. remember his daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Louise. Louise Cook. Yeah. yeah. So uh, she did comedy, and now uh, Phil is like a pretty well-known figure in the Perth comedy scene. Oh, great. And each episode, we always end an episode with uh, Cookie telling us a story. So I don't know what he's done this week, but it looks like the same... Uh, I'm keen, yeah. Same story, same glasses, same beard. I like Phil's poems, they're good. He always do, he always <laughs> jokes them up. Like right. Like a, like a limerick or something. Limerick, yeah. It's very okay. limerick style, yeah. All right, let's have a look. Short story, midwife at a cemetery. The midwife was in the cemetery at the tombstone of her mother when she heard a blood-curdling scream, a cry like no other. Looking over her shoulder, she saw a skeleton coming out of the earth and she couldn't believe it. Was it just about to give birth? Her training kicked right in, though she was quivering with fright. She held the skeleton's bony hand. I'm here for you tonight. And as the baby skeleton arrived and she heard its haunting cries, she looked up at the mother and said, I think it's got your eyes. <laughs> that is your story. <laughs> that was pretty much your story. The same one? Yeah, it was, well, his was better. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was, <laughs> I was, I was, I was taking the compliment, Sean, that's what I was like, wait, was mine as good? No, like, that was like the same sort of premise. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. I, I bet you Phil remembers, uh, are you a friend of the time? <laughs> <laughs> No, as That's always, cool. uh, yeah, Cookie always smashes it out. Um, he's the he's the closer every week. Yeah, we always yeah, close, right. he always sends in uh, stories to close the show, and uh, he came and did the live shows. He oh, came sick! And closed yeah, li- uh, awesome. Yeah, 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 which was good. Yeah. Have you had him on as a guest yet? No, no, never. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have Louise Cookie's daughter on because she's cool, but Phil, no. Nah. <laughs> No, we'll definitely get... Well, he's kind of been on the show. He was like... Uh, we talked to him and interviewed him. Oh, sick, yeah. Uh, during the live show and stuff. Right. Uh, what are the topics for next week, Aaron? Uh, I've pre-made some topics already. Yep. I've got three here. Do you want to do three or do you just want to have two? No, nah, we'll go the two. We'll just do two? Classic. All right. So what's, what's Kieran's character going to be doing next week? All right. So, number one, we've got referee becomes a professional athlete. Oh, and National Park Ranger in the top secret meeting room. Yeah. Oh. They're good topics. Yeah. Very open-ended that people can yeah. kind of explore. Yeah. Who's your guest next week? You don't know yet to the summer. Uh, well, maybe Nathan Hull. Hopefully Nathan Hull's back yeah. after all that work. But if not, we'll, uh, we'll, set, we'll let else. Satan decide. <laughs> we'll let it all decide. Maybe it might be someone from there. Michelle could be one. Maybe. Know? Yeah. Maybe. But... Uh, or Phil Cook, who knows? Yeah, or that other bloke. Um, the or comedian. Sus? Nah. nah he, <laughs> he's burnt that bridge with he's us. Too busy. He's got his own one to make. No, well, maybe you could be a guest on Usus' yeah, show. Yeah, bring me back he's, to. Uh, uh, he's doing a show. What was his. It was the premise. CPS is the name, and the, and the premise was. Uh, it's kind of like Bad Shark Tank. Right, okay. Yeah, co- comedy Shark Tank sort of yeah. thing. So pitching a funny idea for an invention that. Either doesn't work or has a funny effect or something. Right. Yeah. But don't check it out. Just watch Goat King. <laughs> don't worry about any other podcast. Well, they but might have some crossover. They might be <laughs> talking some shit. And we might. Have well, no, he came out. as well. He came to the live show and did. Oh, great! Uh, yeah, yeah, he told his story. But uh, so, what was it? it was referee that comes a prof- uh, professional athlete and a national park ranger, ranger in the top right. secret top meeting man. room. So there, and they'll be what up here. Yep. You put the titles up there. So. That's about it, Karen. Amazing. No, thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure. I'll shake your hand. Amazing. Thank you, mate. And uh, uh, where can experience. where can we uh, see Karen Lyons? Oh, on the on the gram, Instagram yeah. at Karen Lyons. Uh, get down here. Or uh, on the twits on the Twitter. Um, oh yeah, you're gonna get cancelled with some of your tweets. No, no, no. I, I, my cl- my safe. tweets are very clean. Do you uh, write your own tweets or do you have? No, someone no. I've got like four ghost writers now for yeah. my Twitter and uh, <laughs> like five or six photographers for my Instagram. Yeah. Uh, and they're like only two for Facebook because it's like. You know. Do are you that famous where you did like the Madonna thing? 
Madonna, did you see that Madonna? <laughs> what happened with Madonna? Madonna pulled a photo off Instagram and got like someone to airbrush her head <laughs> of this chick's body. Yeah, like I've done that a few times like, just to make myself have more abs. Yeah, but um, yeah, other than that, no, just no, to make you a bit yeah. more beefcake. And yeah, stuff. yeah, 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 just to add to those likes. But you yeah. got like a real uh, n- uh, ninja warrior body. You're all like skinny and gangly and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Gangly. <laughs> Thank You'll you. That's the, the best compliment. Ninja Warrior undercover cop. I'm going to put that in my back. Instagram bio. Ninja Warrior type undercover body. Cop. Sean Conway. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate no. it. No, thank you for having no, me. No, man. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for sending those amazing stories. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. See you later. Hey, keep waving. Oh, really? Keep waving.